Thank you very much. So next up, uh, Josh Becker and Kurt from uh, Lex Machina. You should, uh, if you click to the next one. Yep, there you go. Excellent. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks for uh, having us here, to Matt and uh, everyone who helped put this on. We're Lex Machina out from California, and our mission is to bring data-driven decisions to the law. So uh, law, a historically very subjective uh, discipline with not a lot of data, our, our mission is to bring data-driven decisions. I'm going to do about half the presentation, and then I'll turn it to Carl, who's our VP of Product and Engineering, to talk about it. And we've got about 10 minutes to try to tell you at a high level what we do, and then we'll be uh, happy to answer any questions afterwards. First, very quickly on the company. So it started out as a research project at Stanford. So it was a joint venture between the law school and the computer science department to see if we could build this, if we could build a, a database of every patent lawsuit in the last 15 years broken down into key elements. And so about $5 million went into it, both from Stanford as well as um, a bunch of companies. Most of it actually came from companies themselves who were funding the initial project. And we would have been nowhere if we couldn't have gone over to the computer science department and tapped folks who you guys may know, Chris Manning, uh, who's one of the top NLP guys in the world, uh, I see some heads nodding, and, as well as Andrew Ng, who runs Machine Learning, who helped us uh, develop the technology. Our first beachhead is IP litigation, data analytics, and then our goal is to spread into other areas of law as well. Um, and we got, you know, we're active customers today. So what's the problem? So we talk about the system generating raw data. So what does that mean exactly? So we talk about, you know, in our database right now, actually this is, um, well, since it's even increased from 112,000, we have actually almost 130,000 cases in our database right now. And we track almost 6 million different case events. And what are those events? We'll tell you about in a, in a, in a little bit. Um, almost 38,000 different parties. And the problem is this is very, very difficult data to automate. So it's very dirty data. The court, the clerks entered in, they make all kinds of mistakes. Uh, and also the arcane legalese makes it very, very hard to automate. Um, and so, um, in, in fact, when Chris and, and Andrew, we first started working on this, all, they tried all the standard machine learning NLP techniques, and they didn't work for those reasons. And the context is increasingly important. So as you guys all know, um, the you know, top companies are increasingly uh, under attack. Many companies now have over 100 open IP lawsuits, which are a minimum of a few million dollars, even if you win. Patent portfolios are, you know, thousands of patent portfolios. People don't even know what's in their own portfolio anymore. And the cases are very, these are very complex cases, multiple defendants, long time to trial. And it's happening also in a context where the judicial, the judicial system is seen as increasingly unpredictable. So what do we do? So first we capture the data. So we spend a number of years building out a crawler to crawl. We call 94 district court databases uh, every evening. Uh, we also crawl some, ever, some federal databases as well. That's difficult to do, but others can uh, do it. Um, but we feel like our secret soft is the middle part, so clean coding and tagging. So first of all, a get, you know, all of the normalization that we do to the data, and then it's for our proprietary outcome coding. So as I mentioned, the standard NLP machine learning techniques did not work, so they invented ultimately our own proprietary data classification language that we call Lexpressions. And that's our essentially NLP machine learning uh, for legal data. And then last, there is one manual part to our process, which is expert outcome coding. So we code, we have people who go through and code who won, who lost, in each of the cases, and that enables us to do the interesting analytics on top of the data. And we deliver it in various ways. Um, and it's, you know, again, what we're delivering is actionable data. And I'll, I'll talk to you in a moment, what does that really mean? So I'll just walk you through one example in each uh, column, because we really have three main types of customers. We have firms themselves, we have companies, uh, and then we also have increasingly financial institutions as well. So what do the law firms use it for? So the you know, key use is, is win the case. So we'll walk through a more specific example in a moment. But essentially, with our data now, the, the law firm can go in and they can see, OK, how is this plaintiff, um, so who's I'm suing my company or that I'm representing, how have they behaved in the past? How has our lawyer behaved in the past? How has a judge behaved in the past? What, are the, what, uh, you know, what ha tends to happen in this district? Um, those are all kind of data that can now roll up very quickly and use it to decide their strategy in the case. Um, how do companies use it? Well, companies use it various ways as well. So one way is actually now they have insight. They can use the same data to now manage the law firms. So a lot of companies, you know, you know except for Google, is like a massive, like almost 300 lawyers. Most folks don't have big legal departments. But now they can look in, and, and if a lawyer wants to do a certain motion, they can say, hey, you know, eight out of t 10 times that motion's failed in front of this judge. It's going to cost us $100,000. Why are we going to do that? Um, and also decide strategy. So whether you, these cases tend to cost about 750K to a million dollars every year as they, 
and they tend to last, even when they settle, you know, at least um, almost two years. So when you settle, it's a key decision. So folks are using this now at the board level, so it's the GC and the, and the CFO level, to say, what should our strategy be? How do we compare to our peers? Are we settling more often? Are we, you know, seen as an easy target? Are we settling, you know, uh, not enough, essentially? Um, and, and we're taking too hard a stand? How should we be behaving? So that's an example where that data is really used at, at the C level. And in the financials, so we're actually talking to folks, insurance companies who want to do patent risk, as well as uh, investment firms that are looking to gain access to this kind of data if they are involved in tech stocks and they want to, you know, and they realize that something could happen and have a, a meaningful impact. I'm going to ask Carl here to, kind of, Carl is our head of product and engineering who joined us uh, a couple years ago. He was a founding team of Flurry, which is a mobile analytics company, some of you may know. Great, so what I'm going to walk you through now is actually paint the big picture of what we're doing in terms of the data and then walk down through a specific data-driven decision that somebody might be able to make uh, based on that data. So if you take a look at kind of the, the legal space, big picture, what we're trying to do is create a map of litigation. That includes patent litigation and other aspects of litigation. And what I mean by that is, you know, each case has a particular set of elements. There's obviously the parties involved, so there's uh, counsel, which is the, the attorney, the judge, and the party. And there's other components as well. So there may be a patent at issue in a particular case. There also might be a product that's impacted by that patent. And what we do is we take these various components of the cases and we take a look at other cases and say, look, is there a linkage here? Is the judge a repeat player? Is the party a repeat player? Um, is the, in both patent cases as well as in antitrust cases, and some of you may know, you know a lot of the large players um, implicate each other in both antitrust and patent cases strategically. We also look at uh, a case where a particular patent might be a link. And what we're able to do with this map is correlate what were previously uncorrelated events and roll up and make high-level decisions based on that. And when you have the rest of the metadata around a case, such as what was the outcome, what were the damages awarded, what was the time to trial, which is an implication of the cost of a particular lawsuit, you're able to make generalizations like when this judge is involved, when this party is involved, here's what you should expect, here's how much it costs, Here's the likely outcome at each step of the way. The technology that we do this, you know, this is obviously hard to read. Um, you know, Josh did a, did a great job of, of the first is, you know, is capture the data. So we crawl PACER, um, clean this data, which is often manually entered by clerks. There's typos. There are attorneys that are matched with law firms that they don't even work for. And we have to figure all this out to get a clean data set, which is what we then apply our natural language processing, machine learning, and expressions technology on top of. What I mean by expressions is it's a technology that we've built. Um, it's basically on top of regular expressions that allows us to extract and classify all the relevant pieces of information for a particular case. That goes from the basics, like who was the judge, who was the attorney, what are the parties, to the more specifics, like what were the actual motions that were filed in this case and what were the outcomes of those motions. And what we do is we deliver it. Um, through, uh, you know, basically software as a service. You have a subscription, you can log in, and here's kind of the, the typical case view, right? So you've got all of the entries, the information that actually occurred in the case, you know, the essential data, counsel of record, um, all the various pieces of information which are, you know, not easily readable from, e easily available from other methods of, of looking at cases. And then again, you know, the kind of the key component here is correlating those events and building up the high-level map of the litigation space. So what I want to close with um, is actually walking you through an entire data-driven decision of a particular case. For those of you that aren't, aren't necessarily familiar with the legal space, you know, a patent case typically starts with a demand letter, right? So you receive a letter that somebody claims that they hold intellectual property around a particular product that they're using and they want you to license that technology. And you have to decide, you know, what are you going to do about this? Do you negotiate and it results in a licensing contract or do you fight and send a response letter? And again, as you move from uh, left to right across this chart, you're spending more and more money each step of the way. So how can Lex Machina help? At this particular stage, we can give you information such as, look, the plaintiff has never pushed a case through discovery. They've actually never made a significant investment following up a demand letter. So if you send a response letter and fight, this is likely to go away. Um, there's no need to negotiate in this particular case. Now, in other cases where that may not work out, you have to decide whether you're going to cross a barrier. Are you going to take the negotiation stage pre-litigation and move into the litigation um, side of things, in which case the amount that you're spending is no longer measured in thousands, it's measured in millions. How does Lex Machina make that decision to help you take that leap? 
we can say stuff like, you know, in similar cases with this judge in this space, let's say it's a mobile space, with these lawyers involved, the defendant wins 67% of the time. Based on the expected outcome, you can decide whether to move forward. Once you actually enter litigation, we can help you each step of the way with, with data-driven decisions at each relevant step. So, for example, if you file a motion to dismiss, it'll either be denied or granted, in which case the defendant prevails, but you have to decide whether to do this. Lex Machina can say, look, in similar cases, motion to dismiss has been denied 76% of the time, granted 24% of the time. Based on how much it costs, what the likely outcome is, you can decide whether to proceed. And again, at each step of the way, for example, motion for summary judgment, we can provide data at the relevant decision points to help you make a data-driven decision on what to do. And we'll uh, you know, take questions afterwards.